Hello guys, so welcome back to the Aspire podcast. So today we have Joe on the podcast, who's another online coach out here in Dubai, um, also an amazing hybrid athlete. So um, we'll just be going over, I guess, like our training regimes um, in this podcast, obviously how you optimize your training with your lifting, a bit more about, I guess, our backgrounds and how we got into, I guess, running, because most people I think probably don't start off being like, I want to be a runner, I want to be amazing at running. And it's more like, you know, the gym and the bodybuilding aspects. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll start with just you introducing yourself as well and a bit more about you pleasure to be here thanks for having me on so yeah i think we only met fairly recently didn't mm, we and i think yeah. that was what well, it was through a business mentorship program that that we're both on but i think when did you move to dubai uh october last year yeah i moved september yeah. so i've been here yeah. for some amount of time so mm. going into the second year now and i think the reason for me wanting to move here was just i've been a pt in mm. newcastle for coming up for about about two and a half years yeah. um, and I was kind of full face to face. I had my online presence. I was doing a bit of online coaching, but mm. you know, our mentor always talks about kind of what's the next step. So I just found that I was kind of trading my time for money and I wanted to mm. scale the online. Personally, I found that side of things a little bit more enjoyable. Um, and from a business standpoint, I think it would be fair to say you can progress things greater online. So that was kind mm. of always the next step for me. Wanted to combine it with moving abroad if I could do that always wanted to live in the sun mm. um, and when I kind of weighed up options with different countries looked at Spain as well considered America and oh, Dubai really? just yeah. seemed to be a good fit I think you know everyone saw you know the influences moving over in COVID and it mm. just made me aware of the place and never didn't really know too much about it before yeah. um, and then I just decided that I think it was the start of it would have been 2022 mm. I just I was like I'm gonna move there but needed to save up, needed to grow the online. Um, and then yeah, moved over and been fully online, fully online coaching company since I moved. Um, cool. I was all by myself when I moved and now we've got a team of three. So myself and two coaches that work for me as well. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm currently at. Amazing, you've grown a lot since being here in this one last year, haven't you? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. um, kind of like towards the end of the year, I always do a bit of like reflecting, look back on kind of yeah. where we were. Um, I was actually watching the video of myself and Mark when, mm. when I was speaking at his event and I was like, you, you don't realize when you're in it week to week, day to day, yeah. that you are actually progressing. You might, you might have a bad couple of days, a bad week, a bad couple of weeks, but when you look back, you know, a quarter, six months in a year, you, you realize how much further forward you are. And I think- Yeah, I think like for a lot of us, we don't actually give ourselves enough credit. I think we're very hard on ourselves and that might be part of our personality traits of being like go-getters and always just so like inspired about like growing more and more and more that we mm. don't sit down to be like, look how far we've really come in a year's time, right? Yeah, I think mm. we've probably got something wrong with us, don't we? <laughs> we're um, <laughs> brain cells. <laughs> I was actually, it's interesting to say, I was actually thinking yeah. about that today on my run. Mm. And I think, I think obviously, you know, people talk about downtime and whatnot mm. and like reflecting and looking back. And I, I think there's kind of a line where like, I think some people take too much downtime and gives mm. themselves potentially too much credit for what they've achieved. Mm. What they haven't achieved. Yeah, maybe, you know, yeah. they might have a great week or even a great month and they'll be like, oh, I'm going to take a week, two weeks off now. And like, you'll know that like even if you do have a good week a good month like you, you never know what the next month is yeah. going to be like so you need to keep pushing forward but mm -hmm. i think and obviously we'll get into it later on but i think we both kind of figured out it's more effective to take you know small bits of time off because then it's when you go back to it you're gonna be more productive but as i say, i think it's just about finding the balance because i find if i work around the clock for a month it's just not productive but at the same time you yeah. can fall into the trap of taking a week off and having too much. much fun <laughs> yeah yeah for sure yeah and no, i relate to that i think um to be fair this last two months was probably the first time i've actually taken time off um mm. and it's just like strange to me to actually think why did i not do this earlier just take like half a weekend off because yeah you wake up on monday actually refresh like who would have thought <laughs> yeah but i think it's just like you know there, it's hard there's, though as cliche as it sounds, there's always something you could be doing. Yeah. Like there's 10 things that we could be doing yeah, right yeah. now instead yeah. of this. Yeah. And I think it's just about knowing, you know, what's going to actually push the business forward the most, but mm. then when is a good time to take off? So for example, I've got a friend, um, he's staying with me from Friday until next Wednesday. Mm. Obviously we're not going to be taking the whole time off, but yeah. you know, I'm hundred percent doing nothing on Sunday. Like, like just going to spend time with him and have a good time. Yeah. And, I, and I know that when he leaves, I'll go back to it and be, more productive yeah what do you mean you're doing nothing on sunday aren't you running a marathon yeah yeah but like from a, <laughs> so you know, a, a weird point of view we'll not be touching the laptop yeah. there and eating loads of food and recovering yeah. yeah on that point actually well, on that note um tell me a bit more about i guess like how you how you manage obviously 
running your own business alongside the running of that, like what does your routine typically look like from a day-to-day basis? With training and work? Yeah. I think it's definitely important to say that not mastered it whatsoever. And mm-hmm. I think everyone might look at, you know, these like business owners and gurus and stuff and think they've all got it figured out. But it's, I think it's, as you'll know as well, it's, it's about optimization, like things mm-hmm. change. And it's like, how, how can you get more out of the routine that you've got? Cause there's only so much time in a day yeah. in a week, but for me, like, like yourself have kind of days that have designated mm-hmm. certain work tasks on. So, you know, yeah. I'll do check-ins on Monday, Friday, mm-hmm. and that's pretty much all I'll focus on there. Um, midweek, like today's Wednesday, tomorrow's Thursday. They're mm-hmm. like more, my more kind of like creative days. So, you know, yeah. we're doing a podcast now. I'm doing a YouTube video tomorrow morning with mm-hmm. the videographer. Um, so I try and kind of stretch my week a little bit like that with work. So intense strategic tasks check-ins yeah. creative through the week that's what i enjoy like having mm. a bit of time off from the check-ins and stuff uh, and then on the weekend just just lighter stuff and then do try and take a bit of time off yeah uh, and i think training like as people will know if they follow me on socials i'm very strict in terms of, like i always do the same training on the same days mm-hmm. i'm a big believer in that i think it just works well yeah. for structure and routine but generally you know we'll do a big run on the weekend mm-hmm. um and then I'll run on Monday as well. And then through the week, I'll do my weight training. Um, and then Saturday weekend is kind of time off from that yeah. full rest day and then back in. So I haven't really explained that very well, but <clears throat> training wise, Monday will be upper body mm. run, Tuesday legs, Wednesday will be a run, Thursday upper body and no run, Friday run, mm. legs, Saturday it's off, always Sunday running, run. So yeah, to summarize it, yeah. always training really. Yeah. We do take a full, a full rest day off on Saturday. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and I guess like with that, what does your nutrition look like? Because obviously that's a lot of expenditure. It's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. You obviously need to prioritize your recovery, right? Because that sounds like a lot. Um, how yeah. do you, yeah, how do you take care of nutrition? Yeah, I think it's it's pretty simple. So I mm-hmm. think a lot of people massively overthink it. Yeah. Um, like when I, again, we'll probably get into it. But I, I used to just strength train and bodybuild, like mm-hmm. just that, didn't do any running. And it was very much just macros, calories, the same intake every yeah. day works pretty well expenditures fairly consistent mm. through the course of the week but to simplify it really like if i'm doing more on a certain day mm. i'm going to eat more i'm yeah. going to eat more calories and eat more carbs protein will be fairly similar throughout the week mm. i'm certainly not extreme of it like i like to eat out probably out mm. three to four times a week i'll yeah. i'll make a point of actually eating out on a weekend mm. just so that i can enjoy myself yeah. and find that it keeps me more focused through the week mm. Um, and I take a, a flexible approach to it, you know, staple meals. I don't follow a meal plan. I mm-hmm. did for a photo shoot and I found that it was a bit too restrictive for me, yeah. not in terms of the calories, but just having to stick to the same foods each day. I didn't mm-hmm. really enjoy that. Um, so yeah, just high, higher carb intake on higher expenditure days. It's pretty simple. And then monitor body weight, always trying to stay light, which is yeah. kind of equates to being lean as well. It just mm-hmm. makes sense with the running because obviously you don't want to be carrying yeah. unnecessary weight or body fat. Um, and then just heavily focus on maintaining muscle mm-hmm. and then maybe building a little bit slowly over time. But I've got no aspirations to like put on loads of weight. Like I can do that mm-hmm. if I want and yeah. I can I can eat a lot, I can do that. But right now, maintain muscle and then mm-hmm. improve running performance and then the nutrition yeah. kind of falls in line with that basically. Yeah, awesome. And then I guess like, what is your take on alcohol? Cause obviously being Dubai, it's quite a big party place as well, mm-hmm. right? and you would have a lot of opportunities. What is your take on alcohol with training and performance? Well, I think with training and performance, like the way that I'll break it down to clients is like, there's just no positive from from that side of things, body composition, Mm. you know, it'll reduce your testosterone, it'll affect your recovery and your sleep. Um, But having said that, like it's it's important to have a balance. Like Mm. I'm I'm certainly not against drinking. I just feel like Pearson, I've I've got out of my system. Like I used to run club nights at uni between the ages of, 18 and, and 22 mm. like I went out loads then I yeah. had my fun um I'll probably drink on average maybe once every six weeks now yeah um but I think people just see it very black and white they're either like you know I need to completely cut it out or I'm mm. gonna be someone that drinks every single week maybe twice a week whereas mm. I just see it as like if I've got an event coming up that I want to go to yeah. which is going to involve drink I'm going to go and drink yeah. and then and then that's that you know we've got Christmas coming up I'll certainly be having a few drinks then mm. and I'll enjoy myself but it just doesn't um like without sounding cliche, it just doesn't serve me with what I'm trying to do right now, but I'm certainly not yeah. against it. 
Okay, awesome. Yeah, I think um, similar mindset in terms of like, it's the 80-20 balance, isn't it? Like I think yeah. with anything in life, like with food, 80-20, even training and rest, 80-20, and then alcohol, same thing. It's like 80-20. Mm-hmm. You're not going to kill yourself by having a few drinks 20% of the time, right? But obviously it's not going to be optimal if you have things that you want to achieve and you're out drinking all the time because it just throws you off routine. Yeah, and I think, you, you know, like with the sort of people we coach as well mm. at most and like and ourselves like you put in so much work yeah between those two social events if we're only drinking five or six times a week do you honestly yeah. think like four or five beers or cocktails is going to ruin your progress it's, it's definitely not um, yeah. but if you were to put it in there every single week then that is that is definitely going to have an impact and it's more just the mental health side of things yeah. as well like i didn't notice it when i was younger but now if i drink i find that if i've got a lot of tasks to do the next mm. day which we usually do I'll just stress about it. I'll become anxious. It's just not worth yeah. it for me. But, you know, Christmas, New Year, I'll I'll make sure I'll prepare for that and, and I'll certainly enjoy it. But it's just not a regular thing really anymore. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then with the running, like how did you into it? So obviously you said you started with bodybuilding. Um, when did you go through that tr- transition to be like, actually, you know what, like I want to get into running? Um, I wouldn't say I ever thought, you know, I really want to get into it. Mm. My, my granddad, who I'm okay. very close to, yeah. Really, he still goes to the gym now. He was a really good runner, so I was always kind of aware of it. And I did play rugby when I was younger, so I was yeah. always kind of naturally fit. Although we never did any like actual running, like probably mm. never ran more than like a mile. Yeah. Um. But in lockdown in the UK, everyone was doing the. I think it was run five k, yeah. donate five pounds to the NHS, and then yeah. nominate five people. And I was just like, I'll, I'll just do it it's mm. for a good cause. Uh, and I'd seen someone from school do a five k in like. 20 minutes so I was like okay that yeah. must be what people do so I went out <laughs> and gave it a go and I remember I just I didn't know how to run I didn't know how to yeah, pace yeah. I just went out and like full centre I think it was 21.48 that's pretty really good back, that's really it was good actually a really good yeah, 5k yeah. time but I remember I couldn't walk for a week like honestly yeah. um, and I was I was strength training back then and um, I think I just went out the week after once my legs mm. had recovered and then did it again yeah knocked 10 seconds off whatever Sick. and then i just got into it from then um but honestly for the first year was not running properly i was just going mm. out and trying to run further and faster um mm. and i didn't realize that i was actually getting shin splints and making things worse and then mm. i just always kept it up alongside the strength training because i never wanted to like lose the, the muscle and i think that's yeah. probably one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make who are transitioning over from strength and bodybuilding to hybrid mm. is they'll let their intensity drop in the gym. Yep. They'll probably stop strength training as much. They'll pick up loads of running and they'll wonder why they look different. Mm. Whereas I always just added it on, which obviously yep. does take more time, but mm. it was something I was willing to do. I have the time to do it. Yeah. And I always kept it up alongside the strength training to the point now where I'm doing four and four. So four strength, four runs. Yep. Back then I was probably just doing, I was doing five sessions in the gym and maybe like one or two Mm. random runs. So it's a lot more structured now, but I just really enjoy it. And I think like personally, I never wanted to go down the the bodybuilding route, Mm. obviously natural. Like there's only so much muscle you can put on. I've been training for 12 years now. So I think like if I was trying to build muscle, it would just be, there wouldn't be much progress to be made now Mm. without going into a big gaining phase, which I don't really want to do. So I feel like my progression is in the running now and maintaining with the strength training, but I'll never give up either I don't think yeah I think I'll keep up both if you had to give up one which one would have to go so yeah people one always, has to go. always ask me this and I'm yeah, yeah. 100% saying I'd, I'd definitely give up the running because yeah. I it's important to look good the way I look yeah, yeah like you're not yeah. gonna I always say to people like yeah. you, you don't no one wants to look like a runner in yeah. my opinion yeah so and you're not gonna have delts and biceps running, running. running are you unfortunately so yeah it yeah. would have to be the running that I would drop but mm. fingers crossed there's no reason to do that yeah so yeah I'll keep them both up yeah it's interesting because obviously you're doing a lot right but when you look at maybe the average person they could never commit to say like four runs and then four mm-hmm. gym sessions so then if you are say an average person who just wants to get fit wants to get into running and strength training they want to build muscle but also work on the endurance Mm-hmm. what would be your advice there and they have limited time maybe they can do maximum three sessions a week okay yeah i think it's interesting you say that actually because i think it depends who you're speaking to because mm. i think for your target demographic mm. you know mums and stuff like they actually won't have time whereas a lot of the people that i speak to mm. they're already going to the gym four or five times a week yeah. and they're probably doing like two or three classes on top of that yeah, yeah. so actually they're they're generally exercising mm. like seven or eight times a week yeah so for them it's just about making that switch and optimizing things and putting them on a good program mm. and understanding the goals um, but for someone that is more time constrained i would say let's say you've got someone who can train four times a week i think just probably a two and two would yeah. be good um I would say you're probably going to struggle to build a lot of muscle on yeah. on two days a week. So I think there is a lot to be said for 
honing in on one thing mm. right now. So if someone wants to focus on building muscle more now, do the three strength sessions and then maybe just do one run to maintain yeah. your fitness and then maybe switch over. Like, w And we have clients do that at different times of year, you know, mm. in the winter, in the off season, they'll focus more on strength, yeah. injury prevention. And then, you know, if they've got a half marathon coming up in the summer, they'll potentially drop a strength training session. So I would say a two and two split, but if you are focused on building muscle, then you're gonna need to probably lift three times a week, I would yeah. say. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much exactly what we do with our clients. Like, what is your priority, right? Because you yeah. can't really choose both, especially when you have limited time. It's just not Yeah, and I think if you want to significantly yeah. progress in one, like you if you want to, to put on a decent amount of muscle in six months or a year, mm. then you're gonna need to lift more. And if you, yeah. again, if you wanna become a better runner, it's gonna be difficult to do that on just one run a week. Mm, yeah, for sure. Now, like knowing what you know now, if you could go back to Joe, say like five years ago, what would you tell him from everything you learned in terms of your training, nutrition, lifestyle? Um, training wise, probably wouldn't change too much in terms of the gym because I have been lifting for 12 years. So I was like mm. five years ago, I would have been seven years in. Um, so let's say when you first started then, so 10 years ago. Train like, legs, I would say. I mean, I, <laughs> I actually got into the gym because yeah. I'd, snap my knee in half mm, yeah. so that replaced the rugby so mm -hmm. i could only train upper body but yeah it would have been progressive overload you know all the basics make mm. sure that you're sticking to a consistent training program and periodizing your rep ranges so not not just staying in that typical eight to ten year yeah. round and everything changing some of the exercises not too often um but it probably would have been nutrition mm. um i used to follow just kind of calories and protein which does get you so far but i think mm. if you want to really improve your performance and make the most of it then you should probably be looking at slightly higher carb intake, especially mm -hmm. for someone who's hybrid training, mm -hmm. um, but not not becoming obsessed about it. I don't, I don't think it's, I think as cliche as it sounds, it's it's about consistency. And like, mm -hmm. I think that's one thing about me as I've been incredibly consistent. Like even when I was yeah. running the club nights and hung over, I would still be in the gym so, five days yeah. a week. Like, yeah. um, so that's something I've never dropped. So I think most people do struggle with the consistency side of things. Yeah, I think, you know, what I see is like, most people are way too obsessed in finding the perfect plan, like the yeah. diet that's going to work, the prop, like the best workout plan. But it's like, at the end of the day, consistency is always going to win. Obviously, if you're on a trash program, then yeah. But it's like most programs and most plans are going to work if you stay consistent. But it's whether you can stay consistent on that plan. Literally, know? yeah. I was at, one of my mates went on a a holiday to Madrid um, mm. a couple of weeks ago, and like he's into the gym. He trains regularly. He eats well, mm. not eighty percent of the time. And you just saw his kind of thought process when he came back. He'd not trained, put on a bit of weight. Yeah. And then, you know, he's ordering <laughs> loads of supplements, just yeah. crazy food and stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, bro, like if you actually too. just get back to doing what you were doing yeah. and focus on getting stronger and doing a few more steps mm. and sticking to your normal diet, then then you'd be okay. And within three weeks, you'd be back to where you were. But people just want to jump straight in and go to the extreme, which I can understand the thought process definitely, mm. but but it's not, it's not like sexy as it to say that, like that's not fun. Yeah. Like they just want to, they want to like latch onto something mm. and see the progress come, which is normal, I guess. But yeah. I think you can only really appreciate consistency when you've done it for a, a long amount of you time. You know it works because it's going to take yeah. time, right? So you really have to believe that it does work yeah. to commit yourself back to it. Yeah. And I go through those phases as well. Mm -hmm. Like everyone goes in and out of shape. And yeah. like, you know, when you look back, if, let's say there was a photo of you and you were in your best shape, mm -hmm. just think about the actions you were doing then. It wasn't yeah. because you were taking you know, some crazy supplement or something. Mm. It was just because you probably did more steps, you were yeah. drinking less, you were eating out less and your training was a better quality. That, that's all it is really. Yeah. And it was probably your priority as well. I think it's also yeah. okay to say like, you know what, a certain goal wasn't your priority for a while because you had other things going on, but it's like being honest with yourself as well to be able to say that. Yeah, like I think mm. that's that's one thing. Yeah, self-awareness and, and mm. being able to be like, okay, I'm actually not quite as as on it as I was. And like, you see that with business as well. Yeah. Like you, you look at your best months or whatever, or when you were doing your best check-ins, when like, why was that? It was probably because you were doing mm -hmm. the basics well. Yeah. I think a lot of it comes down to mindset as well. Um, do you find yourself perhaps struggling with your mindset at times? And then that's also directly correlated with how your training's going, how your body's looking, how your business is going as well. And you can't catch yourself when you're in the moment, but then in hindsight, you're like, ah, that's why things weren't going well because I was just mentally in a bad place and I didn't even see it. I, I see it a lot with mm. myself with business. Yeah. I would say I've not mastered training, but that's mm. just one thing that will never slip. I've just got the the high standards that will ne that won't ever slip. Yeah. Um. If something did slip, it would probably be the nutrition that maybe affected the training. But I I just I don't miss sessions. I don't move sessions. Okay. Um. But with business, yeah, for sure. Mm. And, and again, it's like you can start looking at what other people are doing, thinking, oh, mm. you know, maybe I should do that. But if you actually just focus on what has worked well historically over the last. Mm -hmm. 
a few quarters and you go back to that, it's probably going to work again. Yeah. Um, but I think being over here, yes, it's incredibly inspiring to see other people doing really well. Mm. But at the same time, if you get too caught up in what someone else is doing, you can think that you're not doing well and like yeah. you could have your, your best month ever with your business. And then you turn around and hear someone's done triple that and you're like, oh, what am I doing wrong? So, so yeah, mm. all, all the time. But I think you get better handling it, don't you? The, the longer you go through it, I think. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be someone doing better, right? Same thing with like even the gym. There's always going to be someone who looks better than you, who's stronger than you, who's faster than you. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just important to use that as inspiration, but don't use it as a way to compare yourself or to put yourself down because then you just, your judgment gets clouded, right? And you're not looking at your own progress. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I personally love Dubai because I love looking mm -hmm. at people that are doing better than me. I find inspiring. that super inspiring yeah. because you, if, if they are your friends and you hang around long enough, you'll get closer to where they are. Yeah. Um, but I think some people can, they hate that. They don't like to see other people doing better. Like mm. I, I love it. Um, but I think that comes back to like, are they actually enjoying what they're doing as well? Mm. So I often find people <clears throat> will not like what other people are doing because they're unhappy with something they're doing themselves. Yeah. So, but also like you might see people doing well in terms of money and numbers, client numbers or whatever, but you don't know what the inside of their business is like. You don't know what the retention is like. You don't know whether mm. they're actually happy. Yeah. Like I'd probably want to, I would accept earning 25% less and being a lot happier and having a, a better day rather mm. than just pushing numbers for the sake of it, yeah. I think. You know, I think that's something I always really admired in you because I find it really hard to actually meet people who would say that. Like, I think we all know that that would be logical, right? But then there's <coughs> so many people here who aren't just ha like, who aren't happy and they are pushing for that 25% extra. And you can tell maybe they're your friends or people that you know, and you're like, I know you're not happy, mm. but you're still chasing after that growth that yeah i think it, it depends who you are and how you work as well because mm. i know for me if i was just sitting at a desk pushing numbers doing whatever needs to be done i'm not happy mm. it affects my content it's yeah. not as good i'm not get, putting out as good vibes check-ins aren't as good mm. so i think if i kind of reverse engineer that and focus yeah. on the things i enjoy i'll probably end up doing better anyway mm. so that's kind of the way i look at it but i think you've got to have both you've got to be motivated to push when you need to as well yeah. but I'm, I'm just in my own lane I'm, i know what i want and yeah. I'm, i'll move towards that's that good, yeah. um, and obviously take inspiration from other people along the way mm. like there's so many other coaches that i take bits of what they're doing with their marketing, their lead gen mm. and, and put that into my own thing, I think. Yeah. So it obviously sounds like you've invested a lot into yourself, right? Let's talk about that in general. Cause I think for a lot of people, they find it hard to invest in themselves, especially that first investment. I think that's always <coughs> the scariest. It's like your first coach, your first mentor. I think mm. for us, we've gotten used to it, right? Because we've had plenty of coaches before, yeah. mentors, but for Gen Pop again, someone who perhaps looking to work with a coach in their fitness you know journey it can be really really scary making that first move because it's like well I guess like why would you pay for it if you could just try to figure it out yourself um what are your thoughts on like you know investing yourself I think um again it's like going back to what we were saying before about mm. consistency unless you've done it and experienced the hopeful mm. hopefully the positive returns <laughs> okay. from it yeah it's like for me us we're like almost mm. looking for the next thing like what's the next thing i'm going to invest in like, yeah. i haven't actually invested in something for a while now what should i be doing mm. um but again cliche but take that first leap give it a mm. go like if they're a good coach or whatever and you put in the work you're going to see yeah. results and like i think that's something that i thought i would never do like being a coach myself i thought i would never get a coach and then i got i think my first coach about three years ago now mm. um had a good experience with him um and then ever since then i've had one and i just yeah. i find that accountability is is good for me like if i say that i'm gonna do something then mm. if i tell someone i'm gonna do something then i'll go and do it um so i think you've you've got to be coachable yeah. as well if you're going to invest in yourself and you've got to actually do what someone else is going to tell you to do mm -hmm. um but i just think i just figured out that you know there's, as you said before, there's there's always gonna be someone doing better than you. Mm. So if you can pay them or invest in them to show you what to do, you're, you're just gonna move forward. I guess it's probably different for other people versus us because we're putting it back into the business, yeah. like putting it into ourselves back into the business. But I think if it's like, for example, one of your clients or whatever, and mm. they've been struggling to do it themselves, then you've just got to take that leap and you've got to accept that some things cost money. Yeah. I think it's also seeing it as, you know, when you invest in yourself, it's value that you're getting back for the rest of your life. Like it compounds over time, right? And it's not just about simply losing some body fat, like paying for someone to help you lose body fat. But it's like, what is like, what follows afterwards? When you lose the body fat, you build the confidence, right? You start believing mm -hmm. yourself more, you change your habits, your lifestyle, you're a better person to be around. You develop discipline, willpower, right? And all of those things, those things change your life. So it's like, you're not really just investing in, 
a diet plan or a workout plan, right? Like you can go to ChatGPT for that, but it's like you're actually investing in all the other things that you're going to get from changing your lifestyle and yourself. I think people don't see that or don't really recognize that when they think about getting a coach. It's like, oh, it's just a workout plan. Yeah, it's difficult because yeah. essentially you're you're purchasing you're purchasing a result, aren't you? Whether that's mm. a half marathon time or a body composition mm. result, um, and that's what we market as well. But it's it's what you achieve and what you learn to get there. Like it's like it's not it's not about the six pack. It's like what actually goes into maintaining that mm. year round. People don't understand that. Um, mm. And you know, if, if it was a race or something like getting up four times a week and going running in the rain, yeah. that's, that's building a lot of discipline. And then you're going to end with your coach one day and, and hopefully you're going to carry that yeah. forward um, later on, on in your life for sure. Yeah. And it's like when people talk about confidence, I don't know about you, but like a lot of clients come to me, well, a lot of girls come to me saying they want more confidence and they think mm. it's like, oh, once I achieve that body, I'm going to be confident. And of course, like when you look better, you're going to feel more confident, but it's like, it's that journey of being like, I can achieve X, Y, Z goals. Um, I can do hard things. I can do things that I never thought was, poss was possible, right? Yeah. That's how you build confidence. Yeah, it's showing yourself that you can do what you said you were going to do. Yeah. So that's going around on, on social media at the moment. Oh, I've heard it What is it? It's like <laughs> Alex the, Mosey. the best way to build confidence is doing what Building you said you were going to do, um, a stack of evidence or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, essentially just saying, I'm going to do this and then um, seeing yeah. yourself do it and achieve it is, is a big confidence boost. Even on like a micro level, like, I don't know about you, but I get very distracted when I'm working. Mm. So I'll, I'll just write, like, what am I doing right now? I'm doing these three tasks and mm -hmm. I'm not going to leave until I've done them. Yep. And then tip them off. Okay, boom. I, I did yeah. what I said I was going to do that. Yeah. I'm happy now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like you, ev I don't think there's many people that could say if they were leaner or looked a bit better that they wouldn't have better mm -hmm. confidence. You are going to get would. it from that. But it is yeah. just building that discipline and yeah. showing yourself you can do something, I think. Yeah. It's the same thing with like, you know, the mornings, like snoozing your alarm, like that yeah. ruins, you know, your confidence and your self-belief in yourself because that's the first task that you need to do in the day you wake up on time and you snooze it so i think it is those small things right that Sets builds confidence tone, yeah, yeah. And it's, it is those small little things that compound into mm. into big things okay so obviously you fired a fair few questions at me mm -hmm. that i want to ask you some yeah. some of them are a little bit similar to what we've discussed there mm -hmm. um but i understand you've done a couple of bikini com body yeah. competitions right yeah i just wanted to know what your experience of those was like it's something i've mm. never done myself like, i've done a photo shoot but it wasn't yeah. it wasn't extreme yeah. like obviously s similar principles and theories behind it but yeah. what would you say the pros were of that experience or multiple experiences so um i think the pros were definitely building confidence in myself because that was probably one of the hardest things I've done in my life in terms of where I had to take my body um, because you're literally doing everything that your body doesn't want you to do, right? You're pretty much not listening to your body. Um, you know, I was eating what, like 800 calories for Fuck. weeks on end, doing one hour of Stairmaster fast in the morning and still training five times a week, right? To maintain as much muscle as I could. Um, and as hard as it was and as unhealthy as it was, it built so much confidence within me because now if I set myself a goal, I'm like, well, I know I can achieve you it. If that. I just, yeah, if I can set my mind to something, I'm going to achieve it. If it. Is it good for me? I don't know, but I will still achieve it, right? Um, so I think with bodybuilding, it does teach you so much like discipline, um, mental resilience and all of that. So I think that'd be the pr pros, probably the only pros that I would say. Um, I think cons wise, obviously not great for your health and all the other repercussions in terms of no lifestyle. But when you're in it, I don't think you really care because again, you have a goal. That's the only thing you want. You're laser focused and dialed in and nothing else in the world matters. Um, so I definitely don't regret it. You know, I don't think I'd be where I am today without it because really? yeah, I don't honestly like growing up, I had no discipline. And when I tell people this, really? they're like, yeah. When I tell people this, they're like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I was a girl who would wake up at like 10, 11 a.m., do nothing with my days, weekends, just go out and drink, like. What, and then do you, was there an inflection point? Was mm. it, okay, I'm gonna do a bodybuilding comp and then I switched it, or was there, did you gradually get to Gradually, that? it okay, was yeah. my last year of um, high school, I was doing IB and I don't know, like something just dropped with me. I think I just, I never really believed in myself. And then I, my best friend, she was getting similar grades to me. And this is why I think it's important that you surround yourself with, you know, people who are doing better or, people who are growth minded and inspire you because she was getting somewhat the same grades as me. And she was like applying for like Harvard, Stanford, like all these international schools. And like, yeah. I had never, never even thought about that. Like for me, I was just like, just stay in Auckland. <laughs> you know, I, I just didn't really believe myself. Um, and I saw that and I was like, fuck, if she's 
aiming for all this what am i doing like why am i not doing the same thing and that's kind of when it slowly like my mindset slowly changed moved to london obviously met more people who were really inspiring and had like really big goals and then i was like okay cool like i could probably do a bit more with myself found the gym which i think again i think the gym itself is just physical but also mental right it teaches you a lot about yourself and then bodybuilding was i think where it it just kind of exponentially changed for me yeah yeah i I do notice that about the people guys and girls over here that that have competed and stuff like they've just got that ability to yeah put the blinkers on but not even just with their preps like with their work as well like you know for example jj is just super focused on Mm, what yeah what he's doing and, and everyone else and i think yeah i think i i definitely built i mean it's not the same doing a photo shoot but it's you're still restricting to some yeah and you need to be um on point and stuff but yeah i definitely built discipline with that as well mm. um but, i mean this is going to be a massive contrast but how does your day-to-day nutrition mm. now differ yeah. compared to then like obviously i'm coaching you now so i know <laughs> i know how oh, many no. calories you're consuming it's, it's definitely not even yeah it was more than double that yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah i guess yeah just to explain what you, i guess your approach to nutrition now is in terms of what you do because obviously yeah. again with us when we're trying to maintain a lot of work it's also about how the foods make you feel because you can't be feeling sluggish and stuff when you're trying to work as well yeah so um i think before signing with you i had a period where i was just a lot more intuitive and that was nice because i was kind of just like okay well i'll eat when i need to and i'll listen to my body um but i think when i'm also trying to optimize my training as well now and obviously productivity and work it does help to have a bit more like structure so Mm. right now i'd say it's like 80 percent tracked um and I don't find it a struggle. Like I've done it for years. Yeah. I eat the same foods anyways. So yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much my own meal plan. Um, but I'll still have maybe like three to four meals out each week or two or three, depending yeah. on who I'm seeing in special occasions. I'm, you know, I think I spent so long saying no to people due to bodybuilding that for me, a big value of mine is like human experiences, like connection. I think when you go out to eat with people, like it is that bonding experience. And I don't want to say no to that. Um, but I think it has taken time to actually understand how can you eat intuitively and mindfully still reach your goals and feel great. Um, whilst being able to do that because I think a lot of people take the piss when they try to eat intuitively <laughs> yeah I mean I think what you said there the whole mm. 80-20 thing is I think that's the perfect balance yeah. I think if you are actually sticking to your usual plan 80% of the time mm. and then enjoying yourself 20% of the time I think that's yeah. and then you know that you're okay right well if I do want to drop the hammer and go on holiday mm. I can just zone in for four six weeks and I'll yeah. be in probably very close to your best shape yeah yep. but um, yeah I think eating intuitively can work for a lot of people I would say the more further down the performance yeah. route you get i don't think it's as optimal it's hard um, but i was like looking back at photos of myself over the last few years when i was putting an instagram post mm. up when i was obviously i knew what i was consuming i knew a lot about protein but i was eating intuitively and, and it's mm. it's crazy how much your body can change because mm. i think if you eat intuitively you allow your your lifestyle choices to di- just kind of dictate the way mm. you look because yeah. you know if you suddenly go on holiday and start walking around loads doing loads of steps you're going to lean down Mm. very quickly whereas you if you have a couple of a couple of weeks where you're not you're not doing much you're not moving as much you're still eating the same thing you're going to put on body fat um and some people might be happy with doing that but Mm. if you want to kind of stay the same year round, then i think tracking is probably the best but obviously having that balance too yeah i think it's like anything in life right like if you have a particular goal that you want to achieve you need a proper plan in place you can't Mm. just be intuitive with it it's like obviously with your fitness or a physique goal, you can't just be yeah. completely intuitive with your training and nutrition. You probably could maintain it best, but it's like, you're not going to be optimizing anything. Same thing with business. Like imagine if you were just intuitive say. with your business, like it's not gonna work. Same thing with budgeting. You can't just intuitively spend your money. Like if you're trying to save up for something, you do need to know what's coming in and out. Same thing with your calories. You need to know what's coming in and out, right? 100%, I think that's that's something you see on social media a lot. You've mm. either got people on one end that are marketing stuff where you need to be very restrictive, the whole mm. kind of bodybuilding approach, dieting approach. And then you've got other people that are like, oh, you can eat two meals a day and do whatever you want. And you can only train twice a week and you're Balance. gonna be abs- absolutely ripped Love like yourself. me. It's, yeah. very, it's very confusing. Whereas in reality, yeah. it's probably more stable to be to be somewhere mm. in the middle. And like, yeah, like if you look at anyone who's in peak condition or doing really well in their business, yeah. they didn't get there by winging it. No. They didn't. No. Like that's why we've got KPIs to hit and things like that. With, yeah with business as well it's definitely the way to progress so obviously we we kind of covered the the whole self investment thing mm-hmm. before more so from kind of a, a business standpoint mm-hmm. and coaches which yeah. we both obviously do but one thing i've noticed about you alongside that is you you definitely invest in yourself in other ways in terms of like your lifestyle with you obviously live in a really nice apartment mm-hmm. and i know you're, you're looking to get potentially somewhere new what's your kind of thought process and reason behind that mm-hmm. You know, I think your environment is so, so important, right? Because that's 
what you surround yourself with 24 seven. So obviously I'm very grateful to be in a position where I can invest in my environment and you know my apartment and actually have the money for that. But I still think like regardless of where you are, investing in yourself, your surroundings is the best thing that you could do for yourself because you wake up every day in your apartment, right? You go home every day, every day to your apartment. Um, you know, the way that maybe you invest in your mindset, you're in your mind 24 seven. So why are you not investing in your mind? You're in your body 24 seven. So why are you not investing in your body, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's one of those things where it's like, if you look at my spending, I don't actually spend that much on like tangible items. Like the clothes I've had, I left New Zealand in one suitcase thinking I'd go back home and I never did. And I'm still pretty much got the same clothes. Um, you know, I don't really give a shit about tangible stuff because it's like, they, they're not going to give you that much value back in your life, you know, whereas if you invest in your surroundings, your body, your your mental health, the people you surround yourself with as well, I think that's a lot of investment as well. Um, again, compounding interest, like you're just going to get value back from that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's what, you know, you can you can tell people's values by looking mm -hmm. at where they spend their time, yeah. what they do and where they spend their money as well. Yeah. I think it's a massive thing. And I only really understood that with myself when I started looking at kind of like, what do I spend my money on? Okay, like I spend a lot on mentors and coaches, mm. good quality food, going yeah. out for meals. Um, do, uh, same with you, don't don't really buy designer, yeah. not interested in buying some of the things. Um, I think it's important to, to live in a, in a nice place as well, because obviously yeah. we do spend so a lot more time than yeah. there than other people. Um, and I think people are so quick to judge with that sort of stuff and they yeah. don't, probably don't look at where they spend their own money because they mm. might look at someone and say, oh, they're spending a lot on an apartment, but they don't know that that person actually doesn't drink. Yeah. You know, they may be not, maybe not going on holiday. Maybe they want to put their money into that for mm. sure. But yeah, I think that's a massive thing. And I think it is important to reward yourself for sure. Yeah. Um, and have new goals to shoot towards as well, definitely. Yeah. Um, just going back to the fitness side of things, mm. what do you think the biggest mistake, well, what what's the biggest mistake you yeah. see people make when they start with their fitness journey. So for, mm -hmm. I know with my business, we don't generally train beginners. It's more people that are kind of like a few years in, but for yeah. you, you do work with a lot of beginners, don't you? Most are beginners and most are just women who have done like a billion fad diets um, and just think their bodies are broken, which is really, really sad. Um, so I think the biggest mistake that people make and what I see coming in is, I think just, believing that there is a special diet out there you know this miracle pill miracle diet they have to give up all the things they love in life to reach their dream body and that fitness feels like a sacrifice i think that's a big thing like they literally believe now that fitness is hard and like to an extent there will be hard parts of a fitness journey right but um it is just approaching it thinking okay it's supposed to be extreme and i need to give up balance right and i have to go all in um for example if it's nutrition like oh my gosh i now have to become like super obsessed with my food and really track everything to the t or else i'm never going to reach my goals and maybe that's through social media like i'm not sure why probably, people yeah. fall into that trap but that's probably the biggest mistake i see being made and what happens is like they can't stay consistent right like yeah if you could be a hundred percent on top of your nutrition and track everything to t yeah you'll probably be like in the best shape of your life but like, let's be honest that's not realistic or something that you could do consistently so i think it's that 80 20 balance where people really struggle with and they don't really understand what that looks like yeah and i think it, it does go back to the whole result thing because mm. that, you know if they fixated on a result that they want then they're mm. obviously going to want to get there as quick as possible like if it's yeah. okay i need to get in in shape for a holiday in six weeks they're gonna want to do that extreme mm. thing but hopefully once they start with with you they'll enjoy the process and mm. then they're willing to for it to take longer like for me like yes it's, it's important to have medium long-term goals along the yeah. way but I enjoy the lifestyle. Like I'm, I'm just yeah. enjoying enjoying it, and then focusing on you know, okay, I've got a race coming up, or I've got a holiday or something like that. But yeah, yeah. but they don't understand that the lifestyle is actually really enjoyable, and that that's yeah. one thing that our clients say as well is like they're just they're just enjoying their life more. Mm. You know, they're more productive at work. They're making good decisions. They're obviously seeing the the body composition improve mm. as well, yeah. um, and relationships and stuff improve too. I think that's the key there, like lifestyle change people don't see it as a lifestyle change. They just go, oh, I just need to lose X amount of weight. And it's like, well, no, that's gonna be a byproduct of you changing your lifestyle and the way you eat, right? It's mm -hmm. like, if someone has a poor relationship with food and they're so obsessed with like reaching a certain number on the scale, it's like, well, that's not gonna happen unless you address your relationship with food, your you know your habits, your eating habits, your coping mechanisms, which comes back to your lifestyle. Um, so I think, you know, when you look at someone who's in shape, that is just a byproduct of their lifestyle. You know, like if you wake up every day and the way you eat is is just intuitively going to be in line with you being in your best shape and your healthiest shape, 
well then we're going to stay that way right it's just a lifestyle you wake up every day and you want to go for a walk and you enjoy your training so you're going to stay consistent it's a lifestyle and then you're just going to look good as a byproduct yeah and it's like again it's a bit cliche but you do have to enjoy the Mm. majority of what you're doing because that is going to lead to the adherence and like it's that adherence over a, lo- over a long period of time that's that's going to lead to the yeah. result. Like you, you can make a quick change if you know what to do very quickly, but mm. if you want to put on a lot of muscle or you want to lose a lot of fat, it's, it's going to take a long a long amount of time. And yeah. I think p- people just don't want to know that. Mm. Um, another one, what's the difference that you see in people who struggle with balancing their fitness goals alongside a busy work schedule mm. compared to those people who also have a, a busy work schedule yeah. but they still achieve all their goals of their fitness so it's yeah. quite quite a mouthful but I think <laughs> it's an Im- important one yeah um mindset yeah you know because you have two types of people the type of people who go it's just not going to work because of all these different reasons and those reasons are valid, right? You have children, you have a busy job, you work a nine to five, you have a two hour commute. Yeah, those excuses are valid. But then you have the other group of people who are like, well, I still have all these circumstances in my life. I work a nine to five, I have you know, children, other expectations, but how could I make it work for myself? Like, how could I still make my fitness goals work for me? So it's like that solution focused mindset versus that fixed mindset where they're like, it just wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. And then you almost like you victimize yourself. Oh, like because of my job demands, it just wouldn't work for me. Yes, it does make it harder, but you could also change your mindset and be like, okay, well, how could I make it work? Because doing anything is still going to be better than doing nothing, right? I could make myself get up earlier and it's going to be hard, but if I care enough about my health, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So I think it's mindset. Yeah. And it's it's that um it's that victim kind of mm, mindset. Mentality. And I think people don't want don't, don't want to hear that. I feel yeah. like everyone got very soft through COVID, but yeah. but it's true. I you know I coach one of one of my other mates, mm. um, and he's trying to lose body fat, and it, it just wasn't. I don't want to say it wasn't working, but he wasn't losing weight. And I just said to him, I was like, because because he wasn't consuming the right amount of food basically he was doing all the training everything else mm. was on point but he was just eating too much and i said to him like this is this is actually meant to be hard like people tell you yeah, it's gonna yeah. be easy but it's not like if you yeah. want to change the way you look whether that's to put on weight or lose weight mm. you've got to do something fundamentally different yeah. for a prolonged period of time that's actually going to make your body change and 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 it's about accepting that this is going to be hard like like if we want to get our businesses to the next level it's it's, it's going to be a slog and it's it's going to be us going in for it for the next six months and like mm-hmm. If you want to run a certain time or, or whatever mm-hmm. it is, you want to lose a certain amount of body fat. Like it's yeah. meant to be hard, and that's what I see with the the clients that do the best on our program. You know, we are like physique and performance focused, but mm. it's the people that are busier that do better yeah. because they're generally better at managing their time. Like they've got busier work schedules. Mm. You know, even the ones with kids and stuff, they just they just make time for what's important to them. And I think if someone's struggling to do something, because ev- everyone's busy, like who isn't yeah. busy? Everyone loves to talk about how, <laughs> busy, how they're busy they are. Like, we are. We are as well, but like yeah. we still get it done. Like mm-hmm. we've not missed any training sessions because yeah. we choose to do the things that need to be done and, and, and we value it. In it. And I think it does come back to that. Like mm-hmm. you can tell with, with people on on consultation calls and stuff when they mm-hmm. actually want it. And some yeah. people they they want the idea. Well, they like the, the idea, idea of it. Of it. Like yes. who doesn't want to be in better shape? But mm-hmm. there's a lot of work that goes into it. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. It is like it definitely is mindset, right? And that vic- victim mentality. Like even now, I see it in my clients as well. And it's very hard getting someone out of it. And I think it is one of those hard conversations that you do need to have with someone. But I think that's also the power of coaching someone to be able to change their mindset. Because just because you're in a fixed mindset doesn't mean you couldn't go into that growth mindset, right? But it is going to take some harsh like conversations, yeah. and you know you could have you could take it either way. You could either hate your coach and be like, "This is not for me," or you could be like, "Crap, I actually really needed that, and I needed someone to tell me yeah, that." Because yeah, because when but again, the frustrating thing is like to get someone to that point mm-hmm. is it could take six months, it yeah. could take even longer, and a lot of people will drop out before that because yeah. like one, you're investing money in two, it's going to take it's a significant time investment, and, like. Yeah that's those are the kind of transformations that i enjoy the most when mm. you see you obviously see someone completely physically change but along the yeah. way you know what happened in their life like i've got a guy that i've been working with for i think 13 months now and mm. um, broke up with his girlfriend um he wouldn't mind me saying he was overweight at the start now he's he's in great shape um mm. he's running his first half marathon but Amazing. just the mental transition yeah 
from when he started to now. Like he used to mid- miss the odd training session. He used to go, you know, a week without tracking his mm-hmm. calories and now everything's just on the money. And he's just like, I just understand what the power of like being consistent over a long period of time can actually do. Yeah. Um, and he's like, I'm, I'm never going back now because he's got the, and you know, there's there's days where he doesn't track. That's totally yeah, fine. Yeah. There's days where he goes away and has a few drinks, yeah. but but overall over that period of time, he's, he's very consistent. The 80% of the time. Yeah, 100%. And yeah. it's just about not falling completely off, I think as well. Yeah. Being able to get back on it. Like if you do have a bad day, mm. can you just wake up the next day and be like, let's just get back to it, it's fine. Yeah. And that's going to happen, right? I think another problem is like people think oh there's not gonna be bad days it's like they have a good streak and they're like, oh my god this is amazing it's an amazing streak two weeks three weeks and then they have the first odd day where they miss a session or they eat a bit more and then <clears throat> it's like crap it's ruined and it's really not that's what i find as well yeah. is like it's usually well sometimes it's the people that are incredibly consistent and rack up like mm. a, a big winning streak that have like one bad day and then cycle. that might turn into two weeks yeah. completely real. Like there's a there's a guy on our program that's just nailed it for six weeks mm. straight. And he messaged myself and um, the performance coach Harry the other day. Mm. And he was like, guys, I'm, I'm just feeling really shit. You know, I've had bad sleep. Yeah. And um, I just, I couldn't progressively overload in one of my workouts. And we were like, mate, this is normal. Like this yeah. is meant to happen. It's part, part of the process. But yeah. again, that's just because he had very high standards for himself you know he was mm. a busy corporate worker and like you'd had six weeks of being very consistent so i could understand where he was coming from but it's just about knowing that there are going to be weeks like that like i went yeah. to the the cheesecake factory two <laughs> weeks ago and, how much did you eat had, like 5, everything calories and yeah. like that wasn't good was You're it on now, paper yeah. but yeah. got back to it the next day and here i am yeah yeah same thing I'm like I've 20 had, kilos heavier <laughs> yeah yeah i've had moments where i'm like oh i've just eaten too much drank too much like i think it's my birthday yeah. drank way too much i was like okay cool I'm just gonna get back onto it like on, on sunday I went to the gym again i was like cool that's whatever. that's the difference is being able to wake up and just get straight back just to crack it. on just get back on to what you, yeah. kn- you know that was doing yeah what you knew was working yeah um, but yeah mm-hmm. i'm gonna wrap it up there or yeah doing? i reckon wrap it up there um i guess like if there was let's end it with like if we could leave the listeners with one big takeaway and tip what would it be for what anything so anything that you feel like someone could take away that could really fundamentally change their lives <sighs> the pressure's on you go first oh I'm thinking. hey I'm i thinking. asked you first okay um oh okay <laughs> I don't want to say the whole consistency thing again, but it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of it. Um, I'm going to say one that I think. So I heard this on a podcast and honestly, it's something I wrote down my like phone notes because I was like, I just freaking love this. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, it's like in life, you get to choose your regrets. So I know that sometimes take, like making choices is really hard, right? Like it's so hard making decisions. So instead of asking yourself, okay, what decision should I make? Like what choice should I make? It's like, well, what regret do you want to choose because ultimately if you choose option a if you choose say option a then you'll never know what would have happened if you chose option b and if you chose option b on like a scenario you wouldn't know what option a a would have led you to right because you can't split test life so it's like what regret would you be happy to live with and an example of that was actually like when i moved to dubai i was like well would i regret moving here and then realizing it's not for me i've made no friends i hate my life and i've left everything in new zealand um or would i regret going back home and never have known like what life could have been like in dubai well actually i choose the regret of being like oh i didn't enjoy myself and i'll just go back home but at least i've given it a try and i think that's also the case for like someone maybe wanting to make a career change or leave their shitty job or out, get out of a relationship it's like what regret would you rather live with and what's the worst that can happen really exactly and I'd I think rather you, you give know, it a go you see people come here and they just they rock it because it's it pushes them because mm, yeah. it's you know it's it's tough to be here it's expensive mm-hmm. to be here so yeah. most people work harder but I think if I could leave the listeners with one thing it would be move faster I think that's mm. one thing that I've noticed about a lot of people that do well whether it's in in fitness or business or even other industries is they they act faster i speak and see to see speak to and see so many people that they've had this idea that they want to do whether it's starting a business or if it's you know signing up with a coach or doing whatever and they just you speak to them six months later and they've not done it and i think mm. that's one thing that i do quite well is like 
if I've got an idea, I'll, I'll do it. Like if we're like, right, let's do a podcast. Okay, let's do it this afternoon. Like, yeah. Let's just on a, on a small level, but it's like, you know, let's let's move to the next level, do it quick. Mm-hmm. Let's hire that person, whatever yeah. it is, invest in the, in the mentorship because, yeah. you know, you see people completely transform their businesses and, the, and their lives in, mm-hmm. in 12 months yeah. on some of these programs that we see. And like some people won't act and they'll be in exactly the same position in, in 12 yeah. months time. It's like the speed of your success is directly linked to the speed of your actions that you take. Yeah. yeah, and I, I saw Hormozy say something about that. I think it was t- talking about like leads and follow up and stuff. But it's mm. like if you're following Just up with a lead yeah. once a week, can you imagine what would happen to your business if you followed up with them every two days? It's yeah, like yeah. it would more than triple. Yeah, or they'll in, be like, go away. You're like, okay. Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> no, such too. a simple concept, yeah. but it, but it's true. It's so true, yeah, yeah, I think I think move move more quickly, move act faster. faster. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Awesome, cool. And then for the listeners, where can they find you? So main platform is Instagram, Joe <laughs> underscore is underscore fit with two T's. Also more recently on YouTube as well, same handle and that's it for now. 